What's up, turtlings? Today we're gonna to be taking a tour of my new design for a high-efficiency fortress layout. Turd Tips by Turd Nugent. So when I went into designing this layout, I kind of wanted it to flow from most important things in top left to least important things bottom right. Um, that is things that I want in my field of view because when you enter the fortress, you start top left. So a couple of things I wanted to make sure I paid attention to. At the very top here, the ladder comes down and you need this space to exit the ladder. Um, so you would be putting another ladder here if you started building there. I think that's what most of us probably did at the very start of the game. And so this creates one awkward row at the top here. And uh, so that's one concept I had to work around. Then the next concept is these two story buildings. There's three of them if you're in season one, there's only two if you're in season zero. We'll talk about what to do if you don't have the structures that I have. But anyway, these two story buildings, you may have noticed at some point in building, if you, Put them in the middle somewhere. Let's say this building was over here and I have my ladders over here. Nobody, none of the residents would be able to walk through the top story of a two story building because there's no floor there. So I decided let's put our two story buildings up against the wall. The nexus is not the same width. So I put that in the second row next to this one here. If you're not in season one, uh, you won't have this structure. In that case, I might move the Nexus over here and you can just move these buildings up. And that way, when you get into season one, it's just a matter of pulling these three buildings down and the Nexus over and you're good to park that in. So, up above these large buildings after we put those in place, I use Wallowitz in both my CC and my laboratory. I didn't bother buying Luke because Wallowitz has just as much intelligence as Luke and Luke's first two abilities aren't very good. So I want Wallowitz to be right next to my laboratory so I can start a research with him in there and move him back to the control center. Nice and easy, the two buildings are right next to each other for that. Uh, next up, filling in the top row. This is where I looked at next. I wanted these two next to each other. I wanted these up against the wall. This neck needed to be next to here. So let's start filling in our important buildings. Now, the gear factory and the infirmary are not necessarily our two most important buildings to have here. They're not necessarily the buildings we're going to be clicking on most frequently. However, I find that they are the easiest buildings to forget about, especially if you don't have Helen and you need to remember to make medicine, then I think these two buildings, since you have to remember to produce, you have to remember your materials exchange, they're very easy to forget about. So I want them right in front of me when I first enter my fortress. So that's why these two are here. Uh, moving down this column, we just kind of filled some space here with this one. And then going below these, this is where we start to get into the not so useful. This is probably not a season zero structure. So if you don't have that, you can just leave it out. That's just fine. Um, this will be moved up anyway. The water facility I would leave down here. You want it to be next to the diner for Nate to carry water to the diner efficiently. And then I put all my clickables through here, the wider ones, and I put the herb farm right next to the infirmary because Nate's gonna have to carry those herbs to the infirmary. So we want that to be as efficient as possible. 
Uh, looking down the list, I put the farms that need water for irrigation as close to the water as possible while still be, being grouped with all the other clickable structures. If you don't have the bar, that's okay. Uh, you can move this up. I would leave the diner next to the water. One option is to move the diner up and move the water up to here. That works just fine. And then I have all of our other clickables down here, nice open space. These here aren't clickables, they are collectibles. So it's good for them to all be in a row so that Nate doesn't have to jump up and down columns. He can just collect them all and then bring them up to the diner. So that's pretty much my layout here. The one thing I skipped was my statues row. So this is obviously not gonna be all the statues. For those of you who don't have a hero level 80 yet, you'll be getting statues when your heroes start to reach level 80. So you can level these statues up to level 15. So I'm using this top row real close to everything for specifically the statues that I'm leveling up. And then when I get new ones or max out those ones, there's plenty of space down here to park additional statues. I'm sure we'll probably be getting a ton of them later on in the game. So moving back up to the top, we now have our ladder next to everything here, nice and centrally located. Um, Nate, as you can see, doesn't use the ladder. However, after I use a moon, I like to pull some construction workers um, out of a facility. This is really only if you have Pearson, you can do this. But after I use a moon, I'll take them out and collect some stuff. That way I don't hit caps on any of my facilities um, so that when I use my next moon, I want to make sure there's storage room in there to actually get the resources. So that ladder is going to be extremely useful for when I pull those guys out to have them come collect stuff, um, having it centrally located to everything. Another nice thing about having the ladder right there is as we come down, we have it nice and centrally located to some different mines. And the furthest mines away from the ladder are going to be this one here, this one here, and this one here. So it it is still centrally located to all of them, but also you can see I put my warehouse down here, very central of everything that's gonna be brought to it. Likewise, I put my diner down at the bottom here because it's more centrally located to the warehouse for anybody who's bringing stuff to the diner and the warehouse. All of my collectibles for the diner are either right here, right here. Uh, yeah, and that's it other than the water. Um, all the other collectibles are manual click, so I don't really have to worry too much about it, but they're right above it. So nice and easy for Nate to get to as well. So then we jump on the other side of the ladder. Now, I wanted to put the mints next to the gyms because I use the gym heroes to work in the mints. They have higher vitality than everybody else, and both the gym training speed and the mint production speed is based on vitality. So these are going to be our best four vitality heroes. And then anytime I want to train troops, I just put the hero in there, train the troops, put them back over here. So that's going to make it highly efficient for your clicking to move those troops back and forth. And because all of these buildings have the rapid feature, I wanted to put the power generator next to them. I also like having these in a column. So after you do all your rapids, you can just click one and collect them all. That's really important for a layout when you have multiple of the same building, just like these over here. You want to be able to click one and collect them all. That's why I put this row of four up here instead of just making two more squares down here with them and putting these up here is because I want that clickable spot to be as close to the top of the screen as possible. Just for a little bit of extra click efficiency, I don't have to scroll down as far. So then we get into all the buildings that we don't really need. 
um, to be clicking on other than to level up. And so you just kind of fill them in. We got the nice narrow ones that fit over here, our workstations, and then the charging station for Nate. Um, for these ones, the quarters and the barracks, you can put either one in either spot, doesn't matter. Uh, I put these here because they fit best. There's five of them. They could also fit here as well. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, the one place you can't put these is right here under your troop facilities. Uh, the entrance to the subway fit nicely right there. If you don't have a sixth workstation, it also fits over there as well. Either one works just fine. And before we break, I wanted to give you a couple tricks for the building process. Now, when I was starting this facility, I said, let's just pull up everything. That's just going to be the easiest way instead of moving one facility at a time. So just use that recall all button. You're going to have your whole list of structures here. Now, when you go to place structures, there's two little tricks that I found. Let's assume that we want to place a capacitor right next to this ladder. Well, if it's just on our screen somewhere, it's not going to work for us. But if we center that space in the middle of our screen and click the capacitor, it's going to drop right where we wanted it. So that trick works really well. And then if you're going to be placing um, another one, you can just click and drag it just a little bit. Then go ahead and tap the next one and you can create a column like that. There is also the auto feature. Um, but you only want to do this if you're like moving one building type um, or when you get down to the end of it, you can just come over here and just click auto and it's just going to place all your structures right down the list for you. But that places everything. So you don't want to do that if you had just recalled all. But the other trick that I want to show you is if you're placing stuff in a tight space like you've already placed things around you will encounter this as you're building you just have to be close and it's just going to pick the spot for you automatically because it's the closest place that that structure can go so those are the couple building tricks i wanted to show you nothing mind-blowing but it just makes the building process a little bit easier and that is the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you learned something. Feel free to uh, take this video and pause through scenes of it as you build your structure if you feel like replicating it. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions about anything, feel free to leave that in the comments section. And as always, thank you for watching and stay solid.